Hi, this is Dr. Shweta Aratya from Limitless Brain Lab. Thank you to all the viewers and thank you for subscribing and sharing the channel of Limitless Brain Lab. I'm a neurologist and I practice neurology, but I always believe that we have forgotten the ancient, amazing wisdom where we can bridge this science and spirituality. My last visit was something amazing to my surprise as well, which I think I was exposed to in my younger childhood days, but over the time I had just forgotten the beautiful ancient art of performing a Agni Hotra or a Homam. I thank the team of Hariyom Smiles where I had spent amazing two days with also Monika Singhalji, also called as the Guruma, where we got to understand how is a Havan or an Agni Hotra performed. Now my team is always curious to know at the lab, what is the scientific basis behind it? How is it helping me? What are the elements of the Havana? Now as soon as I was performing this beautiful ritual, of Havana. It was just a serendipitous a lock in of a date which happened like that. I believe in some form of divine messages or some form of messages where you're meant to do a certain work. And that is how we landed up having to do this particular assessment or the research on this particular day. Now, Havana or Agni Hotra Yagna has been studied quite in details and we were able to grasp a couple of literature and specifically a beautiful paper written by Rahul. Ravindra Nair, I would like to acknowledge this uh, paper, Agni Hotra Yagna, a prototype of South Asian traditional medical knowledge. Now, I always get reminded of my childhood days, you know, we used to perform Agni Hotra and Homam at home, but then I would just run away. There would be a lot of smoke and then you wonder what are they offering and by the way, why should they waste so much of stuff and the substances which is being given? So it was kind of a very difficult to accept kind of a thing for me when I was young as a kid. And I would go to my parents and say, why are they doing this? Can you tell me what is the scientific significance behind it? And they would fail to answer that question. And there would be this Panditji or the person who is doing it would just recite very quickly all the mantras. And since then, this uh, sort of an inquiry or inquisitiveness was there with me. What is really happening behind the scenes? And thanks to the Hariyom Smiles group, I was able to understand exactly what is the science behind the Homam and the Agni Hotram. See this video until the end because some fascinating facts will come out. If you are trying to heal epilepsy, uh, Alzheimer's disease, anxiety, stress, depression, there have been few papers also on helping these kind of problems through the Agnihotra Yagna. I know you're wondering at this stage, how can this happen? What is a simple fire element doing to yourself? Now, let's understand it step by step. And I would also like to invite in the part two of this Havana to Monika Singhalji for explaining us because she is the person who has vast experience. Last 10 to 15 years, they have been doing innumerable yagnas. They have been helping people to do so many offerings and she would be the right person to also talk to us about the spiritual element of it. But let's go to the science of it in this particular episode. If you have been undergoing yagnas at your home also, I welcome you to write in the comments and how a Agni Hotra Homam has changed your life. Let's see the science of it. The very first thing that is there is you go with a very open minded. We all went to the entire experiment with an open mind. What we did was we did a pre scanning of the brain with the quantitative electroencephalogram. We hook up 20 channels and then we see what are the brain waves. There was a pre assessment. We also took some volunteers who were never exposed. I was also one of them who was never exposed for quite a long number of years where I just got reminiscent of my childhood days. And then we did a post assessment, which is post after the completion of the Havan. Within the first 15 minutes, we were able to hook the people up with the electroencephalogram to see what is happening behind the scenes in the brain. And then we also did their autonomic nervous system, which is sympathetic and parasympathetic. We also made them answer some basic questions about their lifestyle, their diseases, the mood, the emotion. And then we did this complete trial with seven participants. We are going to add more so that we can have a published literature on this particular thing as well. We would be inviting people from various cities to come up as volunteers so that our team can come to you 
and we can have such kind of experiments recreated, restructured in your environment as well. All that we did was this pre and post assessment while the entire Havana was done by the team of Hariom Smiles. I have given in the description the beautiful meditations, their entire journey and how they are into the help to the community for health and happiness. So this particular pot was taken, which is a copper pot, which is like a pyramid, inverted pyramid in structure. That inverted pyramid is actually, there is a reason behind it. The temperature at the bottom and the temperature at the up, there is uniform temperature, which is happening around because of that. If you look at it, if you uh, observe it, it's like an inverted pyramid. So there is some science behind it as well. Now, this homam, everything what is offered as Samagri, as the different Navadha Navadhanya, or Nava Dhanya, which is used in various, uh, some of the homam as well, the ghee or the cow uh, ghee, which is used, there is also use of certain specific type of the materials. Now, when each of these material is organic, a particular paper had done to be seen as a gas chromatography analysis what happens in those chemicals and the compounds which are released. So or if we study the compounds uh, from the medicinal smoke, I call it the medicinal smoke because all the ingredients, the entire electrical or the reaction, the chemical reaction which is happening is very profound. The chemical reaction is not giving carbon monoxide. It's not giving carbon dioxide. To your surprise, it is actually generating oxygen. A big homum, when done with a particular radius, has also been shown to generate one lakh ton of oxygen. Uh, Guruma, uh, Monika Singhalji will be talking to us about it. But let me go through you to this particular study where gas chromatography was done and the different compounds which were released were studied. There was uh, presence of borneol, ethyl octanote, there was octanol which was produced, there was ethyl ester, ethyl benethanate and hexadecanol. I'm just going to give you these examples because each of this had some medicinal benefit. Some of them were anti-inflammatory. Some of them were anti-cancer. Some of them were anxiolytic or they were calming the brain down. Some of them were also anti-fungal. So when you have the homum and the entire smoke is spread across in the house, you automatically in a radius have antifungal, antibacterial and anti-radiation properties. Now, this is about the compounds which are produced. That mantras that you are chanting is also helping you from the modulation of limbic system and the prefrontal cortex. For those of you who are new, limbic system is an emotional system. It is about fight, flight, fear, freeze, while frontal cortex is about the decision making, intuition, judgment, appropriate behaviors, the power to regulate yourself, the power to control your mind. This balance of the limbic and the prefrontal is done by some of the Vedic chants, some of the intonations of the mantras. We know we have studied Om. If you have not seen the channel, please go ahead and check out what mantras are doing to the brain. What is Om doing to the brain? So yes, we do get that benefit of the breathing and the pranayama when each of the step is being performed. Now you obviously invite the deity's grace and that quality is also if you meditate upon, you can actually be able to gracefully imbibe those qualities as well. Now what is happening in the Havana is also the focus and the concentration which is at the fire. So if you are looking at the fire, you can produce beta or the thratak is possible. Now in our study, what we found was very interesting the pre and the post was compared. There was a sudden, sudden rise in those 15 minutes of a wave called gamma. Gamma is the super brain wave. For the people who have gamma, everything becomes possible. It's like a synchronous firing of the brain. So if I have gamma in the frontal cortices, in the temporal on the side, at the back, I get the best of my brain. Each and every activity that I do in the brain becomes very easy. Complex problem solving, attention, focus, memory, mood, regulation. There was a sudden rise initially in alpha, which is the person was relaxed, and 
and then the person was also calm deeper state of theta was found and as the havan progressed by the end of 1 hour and 5 minutes that is what the clock because we had set a pre clock to see what is the change happening at various intervals we were able to see gamma in fact for the person who was doing the havana from the hari om spas she had the maximum gamma what we could see in the entire seven uh, people who were studied now this is very beautiful because if an entire brain is firing with gamma imagine the power that you are gathering in terms of cognition in terms of your mood attention behavior it was just mind blowing for me now there are a lot of other elements in the acupuncture or in the meridian space also how the havana can be useful every single mudra every single time when you are performing a typical practice is helping your other meridian points the acupressure points etc i will be inviting monika ji to talk about it in the more in the second part so that more of this can scientific studies can be got across to you now there was also one interesting thing which was seen in a couple of papers the entropy changes now entropy is a human cellular system an analysis where it should be basically the entropy is like an oscillatory equilibrium now when the entropy is very high the cells are over talking cancers inflammation etc can happen so you want the entropy of the cells to be low in one of the papers uh, in fact this entropy has been shown to be significantly reduced which means now you can get rid of all the equil in equilibrium or the disease state and hence coming back to the papers on epilepsy alzheimer's disease on anxiety this has been found to happen now how often should you do the havana what should be the way in which you do the havana what kind of havana that you have to do is there a specific practice that you need to follow is there a specific time that you need to do we will learn more in the part 2 of the havana before Before I leave this topic one interesting thing which I have to share for myself is now I understand why in the good old days for the purification of the atmosphere for the purification of the self for the cognitive sharpness for the mental alertness and focus such large yagnas would be happening this validates and consolidates the learning that every single havana or homam or agni hotra which is done with a particular step with a particular formation with that intention with that belief and most importantly doing it scientifically doing it right can help in spiritual evolution in building of the gamma which can not just help you spiritually understand the things better as to who you are etc but more importantly also in your cognitive journey in your mental wellness it can go a long way so thank you so much for being with us on this episode of havana please do write to us your own experiences and keep learning together because i strongly feel that at the limitless brain lab we are here so that we can have health and happiness for all the people at the globe signing off thank you so much dr shweta aratya do you want to manifest a dream life a dream car amazing relationship do you want to manifest your profession where you are at the top well people say manifestation is manipulation manifestation is not possible believe me from the point of view of neuroscience it is just reframing the mindset from the poverty mindset to the abundance mindset there are steps to it there is a way in which you can do that and this particular neuroscience manifestation course is one of the popular courses which we are doing right now and i will bring you some fascinating facts and if you do practice consistently over a period of time i guarantee manifestation is not just possible it is very easily doable so join me on this course of the neuro manifestation module where i meet all of you and together we live a beautiful amazing happy and abundant life